I'm Tamborella. Today I'm going to teach you how I do line art using the Chameleon Detail Pen. This is the sketch that I'm starting with. I taped it down using painter's tape onto the light box. This is to secure it in place. Now I'm going to take my clean sheet of paper and tape it right on top. This will make sure that nothing moves around when I start doing my line art. I'm going to use both ends of the detail pen in order to create different textures and different thicknesses of line art in different areas. I'm going to use the thin 0.4 millimeter size side of the detail pen to create less important areas, thinner lines, and parts that I want to blend into the background. I'm going to take the, the thicker 0.6 millimeter side and use that to create areas of importance. I'm going to use those thicker lines and darker details to draw the viewer's eye to more important areas of the piece. I like to start with thinner areas and I like to begin with the face and then move outward from there. So I'm going to start with the nose, the eyes, and the mouth. Even just with the one pen, I'm already thinking about which areas I want to be more important and which areas I want to be less important. The viewer's eye is going to be drawn to thick, dark detail. So any areas where you create thick lines close to one another, that's where the viewer's eye is going to go. I've already decided that I want the eyes and the face to be the focal areas of the piece, the eyes in particular. So I'm going to make sure that I create thick, dark lines around the eyes and thinner lines around the rest of the piece to, to draw the eye right to the eyes and to make sure it doesn't get stuck on any other areas of the piece. So I'm going to take my thicker, my thicker side of the detail pen and start drawing in the lashes. One thing I like to do is draw an outline around the outside of a thick area and then fill it in to make sure I like the shape first. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I want to make sure that the eyes look like they match each other, so I need to make sure that the lashes look the same thickness on both sides, even though we're viewing the eyes from slightly different angles, just based on the, the angle of the face. I'm going to switch to the thinner side now to do the details on the eyelid, because I don't want the details on the eyelid to overwhelm all the details that I, I'm going to put into the eyes themselves. I'm coming in now and trying to create a really decisive lower lash line. Creating a little bit of thickness at the base. Now, I'm going to create the, the outline for the irises.
I'm going to choose my highlight location and then I'm going to go ahead and fill in the irises. Um, she's going to have dark brown eyes. The next thing I'm going to do is use the, the thin side of, of, my, of my detail pen to create some wispy lines for the eyebrows. I'm going to try to use a different texture and to give the eyebrows a different appearance than the rest of the skin. I want to start by defining the shape and then create some, some wispy lines on the inside to show that it's made of hair. Do the same thing on the other side. In general, we want to avoid a chicken scratch look, but for something like hair, that can add to the texture. I'm always looking for different ways to lead the viewer's eye around the piece. One way we can do that is by varying up the textures in our piece and making it look like there are distinct different materials. We want the skin to look different than the hair, the jacket to look different from the skin and the hair, and even the areas on the face like the eyes, eyebrows, and lips to look like they're made of different materials. For little details on the face, I try to use a really light touch. That will make sure that they don't overwhelm the rest of the detail I'm putting into the face. I'm going to use a thicker line for the line of the mouth. And then a thinner line for the lips. For the outside of the face, I want to make sure I use a really nice, thick, decisive line to show that that's the edge of her face. I might go over my lines a couple of times in some areas to vary up the thick and thin so that it creates a nice, interesting, fluid stroke. Now that I've created a really thick, decisive line for the face, I want to make sure that my hair has a totally different appearance from that. This face here is the area that I want the viewer's eye to go to. I don't want the viewer's eye to get stuck on all of this hair here, especially since there's going to be so many different little strands and details that this could very easily take over. We want it to fall back into space, 
So I'm going to use the thinner side of the detail pen and really light strokes to create a thin airy appearance that falls back in space and allows his face to come forward. With hair, I want to start by creating big chunks and then at the end, I'll go in and add little details where I feel like it will benefit the piece. But we don't want to get too, uh, too strandy. We don't want to get too many little details too quickly or it can actually start to lose realism. Hair forms locks no matter what texture it is, whether it's really straight, wavy, curly, or tight coils. It always will form locks. So defining those chunks first and then going in afterward and adding little details is the best way to create a realistic appearance. So I'll define the big shapes and patterns first, like I'm doing here. And then if I feel like an area could use a little bit of an extra detail, I'll come and do that after. Hair generally isn't perfect. It's not all going to follow the exact same pattern. So sometimes getting little hairs that flip up and go against the pattern creates a, a bit of a realistic touch. Now that I've created the big shapes, I can go in and add a couple of extra little strands where I feel like it will benefit the piece. Because we used such a, a light airy touch with the thin side of the detail pen, even though there's a lot of curvy patterns and details going on, it doesn't start to overwhelm and take away from the face. We want the clothes to have a different distinct appearance from the face and from the hair. So I'm going to use the thin side of the detail pen so it doesn't overwhelm the face, but I'm going to use much more decisive strokes than I used in the hair. This will make it feel really solid.
in our drawings, if we give everything the same quality of line art, the same thickness, and the same type of stroke, then everything becomes equally important. We need to decide what we want to be important about our drawings. If we give everything equal importance, then technically nothing has importance because it's all the same. In order to make an area important, for example the face, we need to give other areas less importance. We need to give them some way to fall back in space so that the important area, the face, pops forward and grabs the viewer's attention. Now that I've finished the, the bulk of the line art, I'm going to take five extra minutes at the end to just go around and make sure there's no other little things I want to add to the piece. Sometimes that last 10% can really take your drawing from good to great. Now that I've gone over my drawing one last time, I feel like it's looking good and I can move on to color. In this drawing, we created three distinct areas of line art, and we made sure that they remained distinct based on the thickness of our stroke and the way we made the stroke, whether it was thin, airy strokes or a really decisive, long mark. We gave the hair an airy, wispy texture by using the thin side of the detail pen and creating scratchy strokes that showed the texture of the hair. We created interest in the face and made sure it remained the focal point by creating a lot of contrast in the eyes and then a thick decisive stroke along the edge of the face. We allowed the jacket to be secondary to the face but to feel more solid than the hair by creating a decisive thinner stroke. We varied up our lines and that allows the viewer's eye to be moved around the piece and not get lost or stuck in any one area. I feel good about this line art and it's time to color.